What's up guys, Nick Howell here in the NetApp booth on the last day of AWS reInvent 2022. And I have got the man, the myth, the legend to answer all of your questions about FSX for NetApp on tap. Mr. Andy Crudge. Andy, how you doing? Thanks so much for joining me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, doing great. Thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, so the things we wanted to talk to the audience about today is you guys announced a lot of stuff, or I should say we both announced a lot of stuff as AWS have. and NetApp for FSX for NetApp on tap this week. Can we run down a couple of those big ones? I'm not going to make you go through all eight of them. People can go read the blog post. I'll give you guys a link in the description for all of them. But what are the big hitters for this week as far as uh, FSX on tap? Yeah, so there's there's really three big themes. Uh, I think the first one, one I'm most excited about is performance. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, um, we're we now announcing we're doubling the maximum throughput, the maximum IOPS you can drive to your file system. Damn. Um, you know, really great for high performance workloads like databases, EDA, M&E. Uh, and we're also now also offering an NVMe read cache, or flash cache in NetApp terms, on our single easy file systems. We've uh, had it since day one on multi easy, got a lot of excitement about it, so now we're adding support for flash cache on single easy as well. Yeah. Um, also, you know, really great for those kinds of IOPS heavy, read heavy workloads. Definitely. Um, we, we've seen a lot of that stuff in uh, the all flash, since the all flash has come up. We've seen NVMe kind of take the world by storm over the last few years, especially. Our A250s uh, are kind of one of our hottest selling systems. We use leveraging NVMe and additional shelves. So yeah, NVMe is going to be a big deal. We're really looking forward to the cloud kind of wholesale adopting it yep. as a protocol and that is going to open the floodgates of a lot of stuff to do with data and storage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with that, we get on the order of a million IOPS that you can drive, which is crazy. <laughs> so uh, wow. I'm really excited about that one. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what's the next big one for you, if you had to pick one out of your list? Yeah, so the next big one is a, a big simplifier for networking. Uh, oh, so, uh, okay. yeah, fun fact, when you create a multi-Z file system, the lifts that you use to access data are actually, they're, they're floating IPs. They're kind of route table entries in your VPC, and uh, before they had to be outside your VPC CIDR space, which meant if you wanted to access from on-prem, you'd have to actually go to your transit gateway, go to your on-prem route tables, create custom routes, custom rules, to route to those floating lifts because they weren't just part of your VPC CIDR space. Um, huh. Bit of a headache, yeah. So we um, you know, we partnered actually with with the NetApp team, with the EC2 team, and uh, we announced this just this past week that starting today, any new multi az file system you create, by default, we figured out a way to create those IPs, all those lifts within your VPC CIDR space. Uh, that just super simplifies the You're setup. You're doing process. all the work for us. <laughs> What are, making, making it a lot easier. Making it a lot easier. Talk about yeah. managed services in the cloud, guys. This is a perfect example of how that stuff works. Taking a lot of the heavy lifting of infrastructure creation, management, all of that away from, and just getting straight to putting data in the cloud. Love it. Just wanted to be easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so next one, what do we got? So next one, a bit of a collection. We call it internally a grab bag of features. But okay. uh, you know, there's, there's a whole list of NetApp on tap capabilities. Really long list, long yeah. tail of capabilities, and you know we we since day one have supported things like creating clusters, SVMs, volumes, managing those resources through our API and console. Um, you know we launched a few different capabilities this uh, this week around now you can manage data protection volumes through our console. You can choose a volume snapshot policy through our console. Um, you can configure we call it copy tags to backups, kind of have tags auto propagated from right. your volumes to their backups or things like Love console tags. allocation. It's great, yeah. yeah, and now you can get them propagated. And lastly, you can now um, change the route tables your file systems use. Um, so, you know, just, just really, you know, simple capabilities, but um, add a lot of value for customers. Just yeah. make it easier to get started, use our simple console, and, um, you know, have everything work end to end in a few minutes. Totally. Where are you seeing the adoption currently? Like, we, we're 18 months into this thing almost. Where are you seeing, is it still very DR and backup heavy? Are we seeing production workloads start to land on this or is it some combination of both? It's, it's absolutely a combination of both. We're seeing a lot of production workloads on the service. Uh, you know, we got asked this question quite a few times throughout the week, customers yeah. are curious. And, and the answer is- Is it good on, enough? Uh, is it yeah, strong enough, right? Yeah, partly is good enough, you know, yeah. am, I, am I in the right cohort? And the honest reality is, you know, if you look at the on-prem space, ONTAP has been a strong solution for a number of use cases, number of workloads, number of verticals. For decades. Um, for decades. Yeah. And what we're seeing in the cloud is the same thing. The strengths that ONTAP provides in terms of the data management features, the capabilities, are all true in the cloud. Yeah. So you know, the workloads like uh, EDA and financial services and yeah, DR and backup and databases, like all of those same ones where ONTAP shines we're seeing it continue to shine in the cloud with the yeah. service. You know, one of the things that I was, I was just having a conversation with a, with a partner, and one of the things that people are having trouble getting their head around was, can this do all things? And the answer is yes. 
and I, 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 I hearken back to the times of VMware, guys, of it's deja vu all over again. One of the things that made VMware as big as it was on-prem was the fact that shared storage came into play. And I think we're going to see kind of the exact same thing start to come into play in the cloud, specifically with things like FSx, around um, the ability to consolidate a lot of your storage and data management operations into a single file set of file systems, um, and that same shared storage mantra to allow you to access all of your stuff that might be in uh, EC2, your stuff that might be in VMC, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. I think the shared storage movement is back um, FSx ONTAP is bringing it back to, with AWS, and I think if you're not paying attention to what's going on with FSx, you really should, guys. Uh, Andy, anything else you want to leave the people with before you get out of here? Just, uh, we, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of customer discussions. We launched a lot of capabilities. We're not done yet. Uh, we have a really exciting roadmap for this upcoming year, mm. and uh, excited about the future ahead. Definitely, me too. Well, thank you so much for taking some time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, make sure you follow, subscribe, do all the things you know how to do. We'll see you next time.